One thing which has been mentioned by my previous speaker was that interfaith dialogue does not mean that you are uh, keeping away of your own identity. No, you keep your identity. Because interfaith dialogue would not be interfaith dialogue if people lose their own identity. I would like to quote here a hadith, a, state, uh, a very important event in the history of Islam. The Prophet Muhammad, <coughs> peace be upon him, migrated from Mecca, his homeland, to Medina, to another city. When he migrated there, there were Jews already living there. So he and his Muslim followers were the minority. The majority were Jews. In Islam, Jews and Christians are given a special term. The term is the people of the book, Ahlul Kitab. And uh, the Quran says on various occasions, that the people of the book are closer to you than any, any other nation on earth. And in terms of the people of the book, the Jews and the Christians, then Islam, the Quran says that if you compare the Christians and the Jews, then the Christians are more closer to you, to Islam. There are more similarities between Islam and Christianity than there is between Islam and Judaism. So this is in the Quran. Now when the Prophet came there, he saw the people, the Jews, fast <coughs> for the tent of Ashur. Tenth of an Islamic month. And he asked them, he asked them, why are you fasting on this day? Him questioning the Jews was not a debate. The, uh, the scholars have talked about this hadith and they say, this questioning of the Prophet was not so he wanted to initiate a debate between them. You know, you are wrong or we are right. No, he, this was purely interfaith dialogue. Why? Because what happens next is when the Jews tell him the reason why they are fasting, and they mention that the reason why we are fasting is because this was the day our nation, the children of Israel, got freedom from Pharaoh. So we are thanking God by fasting on this particular day. So the Prophet Muhammad, you know what he said? He said, نَحْنُ أُولَى Musa minkum." Moses is also closer to us. So what we will do is we will also fast on that day. So, in fact, not only that, he said we will additionally fast. We will fast two days instead of one. Why? Because this is interfaith dialogue. You are having a dialogue, but at the same time, keep your own identity. The Prophet didn't say we are going to fast one day like you. No. Then he was adopting the identity of the Jews. He said we will fast two days, which means that he was distinguishing there that the identity must be kept separate and the identity must be kept when there is interfaith dialogue. I think in interfaith dialogue, what needs to be quoted is the text of both religions. Because the text is the most purest form. The text, divine text, revelation, is the most purest form. So when you discuss with each other and have dialogue, then mention the text or mention the conduct of the prophet. The prophet is the one whose conduct is uh, the, the correct conduct. And his conduct will reflect the true teachings of his religion. So when I say... Uh, how should Muslims behave with Christians? The best thing for me is, I think, uh, would be appropriate is to give you an example of the Prophet Muhammad. Because he is the founder of the religion of Islam. Now, during his life uh, in Medina, uh, there were, in fact, before Medina, in Makkah, when he was in Makkah, he sent some Muslims to migrate to Abyssinia, Habasha. There was a particular ruler there, Najashi. And uh, he was a Christian, Ashama ibn Abja. This is his name, Ashama ibn Abja. He was a king, Christian king, uh, and uh, some Muslims went to him. When the Muslims uh, went to him, uh, he, they were welcomed. They were welcomed. And the Prophet was very happy and very pleased with that. In fact, he prayed for this king. When he found out later that the king had passed away, he, while he was a thousand miles away, he raised his hand and he prayed for him. And he told the Muslims also to pray for him. Even though that uh, king, according to a lot of uh, narrators and historians, did not accept Islam. Some say he did, but a lot of them, they say he did not. So even though he didn't accept Islam, but the Prophet prayed for his forgiveness. The, the next thing, the Prophet, in, his, in the time of the Prophet Muhammad, when he was in Medina, a delegation of Najran came, a delegation of Christians, priests, monks, they came. And, and the whole kind of, the, the, the meeting took place because there was going to be a debate. There was going to be debate between them. But the, the, the amazing thing is that it was going to be a debate, but the conduct of the Prophet with them, how he dealt with them, uh, his, his behavior towards the whole scenario changed everything, changed the whole scenario. It changed it from a debate to a dialogue. 
Because when they came to Medina, they said, Oh Muhammad, we have come in your city and you are the ruler in this city. We would like to stay somewhere. But there is, we don't have anybody to stay. Where, where are we going to stay when we are going to debate with you? The Prophet Muhammad said, The best and most sacred place in our religion is the mosque, is the house of God. So you can stay in the house of God. So the Christians, the Rajaran priests, they were living in the house of God. And then they asked another question. They said, well, we have to also pray. So where do we pray? The Prophet Muhammad said, you can also pray in the same place where you are going to stay, which is in the mosque. So because of his behavior, it changed to a dialogue to this extent that when this, this ended, this, this uh, whole meeting with the Christians, the Prophet Muhammad, he gave out a charter of privileges to Christians. And this is something a lot of Muslims even today do not know this. And we mentioned that we have very few Muslims here. And I can tell you the reason. I can tell you the reason. The reason is that a lot of Muslims need to be educated. What is interfaith dialogue? Because a lot of Muslims are in fact today afraid that, oh, we are going to sit with them, it means we are going to share the same views. And this is against our religion. They have a wrong you know, perception of interfaith dialogue. The other reason is because a lot of them, they think that we have to uh, keep the Christians as our enemies. And, they will, they, and those who adhere to this opinion will quote certain texts of the Quran out of context. Out of context. But there are people with that opinion. And this is why when you say that the Sheikh went to the church, people ask questions. Why did you go to church? <coughs> what? Are we allowed to go to the church? People ask questions like that. Which means there is a lot of ignorance, and we need to educate our... I think on the, this is on both sides, <coughs> not only Islam, even in other religions and Christianity. <laughs> our followers need to be educated. What our divine text teaches about, about tolerance, about acceptance. And the Charter of Privileges with the Prophet wrote, this is very beautiful. He said, this is a message from Muhammad ibn Abdullah, the son of Abdullah, as a covenant to those who adopt Christianity, near and far, we are with them. Very lie, I, the servant, the helpers, and my followers defend them because Christians are my citizens and by Allah I hold out against anything that displeases them. No compulsion in religion is to be on them. Neither are their judges to be removed from their jobs, nor their monks from their monasteries. No one is to destroy a house of their religion, to damage it, or to carry anything from it to the Muslims' houses. Should anyone take any of these, he would spoil God's covenant and disobey his prophet. Very like, these are my allies and have my secure charter against all that they hate. No one is to force them to travel or to oblige them to fight. The Muslims are to fight for them. And then he says, no one of the nation of Muslims is to disobey this covenant till the last day, which means the day of judgment, the end of the times. So this covenant is not only applicable at that time, 1400 years ago. In fact, it is also applicable today.